is his name. Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love. And we have Lynette with a powerful testimony. That testimony had me bawling my eyes out. I want you to hear this because many of you need to hear how God does things deep down inside in the hidden areas that are even hidden from us. Thank you, Lynette, and go for it, girl. Praise the Lord. Um, I just would like to start off by saying I thank God for you and your ministry, and I thank God for the Holy Spirit who truly teaches us all truth and brings us into the truth because, you know, when God sets you free, when Jesus sets you free, you're free indeed. Yes. So I'll just get right to it. Um, I have basically been around ponies all my life, you know, people playing church, and they have the big, pretty, rosy smiles and all of this and that and the other. And I always, for some reason, could could detect or discern, pick up on, I don't know, um, that something wasn't quite right, that things weren't quite as rosy as they said they were, right? Mm -hmm. And I knew I always used to say to myself, I don't want to play church. I don't want to be one of the ones that, you know, I have this wonderful ministry and everything's just, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You know, I didn't want to be like that, you know, and I always told the Lord, Lord, between you and I, if I'm going to do this thing with you, it's got to be real. You know, remember that song, It's Got to Be Real. And he took me up on it, and it didn't happen overnight. Some years, years later, as a matter of fact, recently, just a couple of days ago, <clears throat> I was uh, thinking about my life and, you know, my needs are met. And, you know, I have food. I have somewhere to sleep. I've got clothes. You know, I have my needs met, right? And... I had this question. I was talking to myself, not realizing that the Lord is in there, too. He's listening, too. And I asked myself, why are you so angry, though? What are, what are you so angry about? And it was as, as if the Lord said, <clears throat> you want to know why? And I think I went to sleep. Yeah, I had a dream. And the Lord uh, showed me in this dream my life and my uh, expectations, my expectations of how I wanted my life to be. I wanted to be married to a certain individual. I wanted, you know, the kids and the house and the picket fence. I wanted all these things, and I wanted it by a certain time, you know. And I didn't want to be no old woman, you know, uh, you know, uh, without you know, having achieved these things because this is what I really, truly wanted. And the Lord told me, he said, you are bitter. You have, you, you have been angry and bitter and you feel that life has passed you by. He said, but I want to, want to tell you something. This is what the Lord told me. He said, you have not missed anything and anything that's going on, you ain't missing out on. I said, say what? He said, you haven't missed out on anything. So what you think or you desire or that you felt like you didn't get, you haven't missed out on anything, daughter. And you're not missing out on anything right now. And I repented and I said, oh, Lord, I do not want bitterness because I know bitterness will defile you. Bitterness will, will it's like you have a, a clean spring of water and, and bitterness will, will dirty that thing up, filthy it up, you know, and I was like, oh no, oh no, Father, I'm sorry, forgive me, he says, I forgive you, now forgive yourself and release that bitterness, give it to me, and I did, and, you know, I, I did cry, um, I was thinking about it right now, that I had been so, you know, missing out on life. And be really being happy and having good relationships and all of that because this thing that I didn't even think of, see, it was so deep down in there, I had stuffed it. Like when you take any sweet dirt underneath a carpet or you stuff stuff in a closet and you don't see it out of sight, out of mind, right? No, that's not what happens. Bitterness will cause you to look at everything in an ugly way. You'll always have that cynical uh, mindset, you'll always have some type of insecurity, jealousy. Oh, it's so much. Oh, it's terrible. 
But I have to say, this is a miracle. This is a testimony and a miracle. When God said, okay, let's, let's deal with it, okay? And I said, all right, I admitted to it, asked for forgiveness. There is a, I feel like a big chain has been broken off of me. I know it has. Satan can't hold me in that area anymore. No. Because when God told me, I want to remind you, too, what you think you've missed out on, daughter, you haven't missed out on anything. Mm -hmm. And right now, right now, presently, daughter, you're not missing out on anything. What I have for you is for you, and at the appointed time, you will receive it. But I want you to share this with people that have been upset and hurt about maybe they had a child out of wedlock. Maybe the man that they thought they were going to marry married somebody else. Uh, the job promotion that you thought you were supposed to get and they overlooked you and gave it to somebody else. We all have all kinds of little thorns and, 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 and things and hurts and all kinds of stuff that we hold on to and we think, because some time has gone by, oh, I'm over it. But no, you're not. You never dealt with it. And Satan will use those things against you, and you'll wonder, how come I can't go any further? It's like when you start a car, and you can't seem to get it in gear. You just, uh, you just gear and, you know, turning the key, and it's just not, the, the spark, spark plugs are not firing. You know? And it might run, but it's not running smooth. There's something wrong. You need to... Take the time, ask yourself, be honest with yourself, because denial is not just a river, okay? Denial is something that's in us. We deny so many things. We say, oh, I'm over that. I don't care about that anymore, but that's not true. And also, too, I'll just add this real quick, and then I'll get out the way. When you have bitterness and you have um, unforgiveness, that they all go in together, that opens up the door to all kinds of evil. It really does. And sicknesses and diseases, you yes. high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer. Um, a lot of people don't believe that, but disease, this ease, that this ease, you're not at ease within yourself. And that opens the door for your body to be broken down and you can be afflicted. A lot of people don't agree with it, but a lot of people do know that what I'm saying is the truth. So I also feel that I feel healthier also too. Um, there's been a miracle. There's been a miracle. Now, now there's more to go. There's more to go. There's other things, you know. Um, I have some things that, ah, you know, I, I wonder why I have such a, a, um, a desire for always wanting to eat food all the time. And you can, a lot of people don't understand this, you can have an unnatural relationship, ungodly relationship with food. And God just dropped that thing in my spirit just now. It's a place of comfort. You're trying to fill a hole that only God can fill, and you use it. Some people use alcohol. Some people use sex. Some people use drugs. When you are trying to self-medicate, take care of it yourself, you're never going to get healed. Just like Sister Pat said, it's just going to get worse. There's going to be an infection. And eventually, if you don't deal with that infection, it's going to deal with you, and it could mean your life. And I mean that. I mean that. It could mean your life. It could take you out of here early. So I love everybody who is going to listen to this, and I just pray for all of you who are hearing that you would just give your heart to the Lord if you haven't already, and ask Father God, if you are a Christian, What's going on with me, Jesus? I know that I'm irritable. I know that I'm mean still. I know that I'm still cranky. Why do I gossip? Why do I have a tendency? Ask him and let him deal with you and get that dealt with before it's time to stand before him. Because we all going to stand before him now. We all going to, all of us, whether you believe it or not, we're going to be accountable. Let's get this thing straight right now. Get it over with. Examine ourselves. And let's get healed together. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Sister Pat. Amen. I love it. I love it. I love it. I was going to add some, but I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs>